Today I'm going to go over hydraulic jacks, floor jacks, bottle jacks, and any sort of hydraulic jack in between. We're going to go over some common problems with them, how to repair them, how easy is it, how hard is it, is it even worth it? Keep watching. First let's talk about floor jacks real quick and get them out of here. Floor jacks are probably one of the most commonly rebuilt items and there's some sort of mystery behind them, but they are nothing more than a simple bottle jack. That's all they are, is a bottle jack positioned horizontally with the valving and stuff just a little bit different to make it all work. So this can go right off the table because there's nothing here that isn't in here. So inside all these hydraulic rams, you got your pump and you got your hydraulic cylinder. And then you have a reservoir around the outside. So inside there you have your, you have your ram, the centerpiece, and then you'll have a housing so that it slides up and down. And then you just have a reservoir of fluid all the way around the outside. That's why there's a little fill plug on all of these things because the outside just kind of, you know, and it can be any size. This one needs a little bit bigger, you know, area to hold fluid around because the middle piston is so full. And so when this, the fluid level, if this was clear, as you pump it up, the fluid level drops from the outside housing, gets sucked into the pump and goes up into the hydraulic ram, forcing it up and out to a point. And it's able to do all this with this amazing thing called check balls, which is essentially just a little BB. This is, of course, way bigger, and a spring. That's it. So, when you pull the rod up, fluid from the reservoir needs to fill up this, just this little chamber. So fluid from the reservoir, let's say, is sitting right here, is pulled past this little check ball. So the check ball the uh, creates suction. So this area right here is our piston. And this area creates a little bit of suction and it's able to pull that ball back and put it into here. This isn't a very strong spring. Okay. And then when we push down, the fluid doesn't want to go back because now the fluid actually helps push the ball against this surface with the spring's help and fluid doesn't want to go this way. It wants to go through here up into our up into our hydraulic ram with another check ball and so this check ball over here gets pushed away and the fluid runs past it and then it the spring pushes it back down when the pressure in here is lower than the pressure out here and the higher you know the more weight you put on here the harder this pushes against here and you know when you've jacked something up it gets harder and harder to actually press because you're fighting just the the check ball but you're also fighting the pressure pushing against this ball and you just do it again you open it up it lets fluid in yeah pump it down it cl starts cl closes that and then it opens this up and lets the ram go up that's it there's a big mystery between these behind these and a lot of times people put them in backwards i've seen so many where people put them in backwards and they do absolutely nothing you know they put them backwards and they do nothing you can't get anything to them one of the reasons they fail is maybe the uh the ball has some pitting or some you know some rust specks on it because water got in it it's not making a tight seal here so if you go to pump and it's not really pumping up fluid could be running past this ball right here which is just located down in the bottom right here it could just be pushing back so taking the ball out cleaning the surface cleaning the surface in here a little bit where this ball seats can fix it and the same thing with this setup over here as well. And generally this, this entire setup of these check balls and stuff is all located down in here. So now if the jack falls with the weight of the vehicle, you know, you pump it up and it slowly just kind of settles down. That generally means this one over here isn't sealing tight against its surface. Same thing, rust pitting, something else, um, just debris stuck in there. So cleaning up this side over here, maybe the spring is stuck or the spring is collapsed or rusted or something um, but that needs to have a good seal that'll if if fluid can push it back against here then it will push back here and generally when it does that you'll have a, an idea because it will also you know with the weight of the vehicle this should always stay down it shouldn't you know kick itself back up like that if this kicks itself back up that means the fluid pressure from here is pushing down and and forcing that back up. So that's bad. If you jack, if you jack something up and you let it go and it slowly rises up, that means this check bell is leaking right here. Now all the release does is it just opens the main chamber, 
with the hydraulic piston moving up and down, all it does is open that up to the reservoir. So it just opens up a passage between the reservoir and the center piston. That's it. So you unscrew that and it just opens it up. And generally, there's two different types. There's types where it's just a, a fine needle, but it seems like uh, that requires more machining. So most, most places just do, there's just a little, again, a little, it's just a ball. There's no spring or anything attached. It's just a ball that the screw pushes on and pushes against a seal to help you know, just not allow the fluid to release from that area and back into the, the reservoir area. And so once I release the jack down, all it does is push the fluid out of the middle and it just rises on the outside and it should rise right to your fill level or right below it. So when you take that out with the jack all the way down, you just fill it up until fluid comes out, put your screw or generally it's a rubber plug back in and you're done. So let's put some air in this jack. If you ever want to use a jack sideways, you can. You just have to use it with this down because the pickup right there, it needs to pick up the uh, the reservoir from right there. And you can use it upside down. If I turn it like this, I'm gonna get air in it. So now I have air in it. You can see it moving just a little bit. It's easy to get air out. Most of the time you can just release, push it down and you're good. But you can also just release I pump a couple times and it's just cycling the fluid and the air out. Turn it back on and we're good. Air is out of the system. It's completely bled out. Easy enough. So I told you I'd show you how to rebuild one. This one's actually out of a pallet jack. It's a, it looks a little bit different, but it's exactly the same thing. It just, you have your ram that goes up and down. It's just extended for extra, because it needs to go extra far. You have your little piston that you push up and down to make this go up and down. You do it all manually. You have your little release. Everything is there. The thing is that you'll run into when you're gonna, if you decide to rebuild one of these things, like a bottle jack or something else, is actually finding parts. And sometimes even floor jacks, they're not the easiest to find. But when you do, you'll find it's just a bunch of little seals and there's some check balls and, you know, we got some copper washers, a spring, and there's really nothing to it. And hopefully if you find it, they'll give you one of these is a parts breakdown because what I find in most of the jacks that I rebuild is a lot of times people put stuff in backwards because they've been, you know, especially the check balls. I don't know why people always put check balls in backwards, but they're almost always backwards. And so it's good to have a breakdown to see exactly what you're doing. But I'm going to go over this. All the principles are they exactly the same as a bottle jack. It's just scaled up so you can see everything a little bit better and you can actually find parts because you're not going to be able to find parts for this. Um, you're just not. You could measure it and maybe you could find a seal for it, but you're not. It's, it's not the easiest thing to do. I'll be honest with you. Floor jacks are a little bit different, you know, because you can get an old Craftsman jack or something like that and you can find somebody on Amazon or something selling the parts kit. This kit right here I bought off Amazon for this. Uh, this is a Crown Pallet Jack jack. And we're just gonna put some new seals in. It's as easy as that. So I highly recommend that you inspect all of your parts before you actually buy a rebuild kit because they might not be rebuildable. This right here, you can see this hydraulic ram has all these pits and stuff over it. So I could rebuild this, but it was oh, it would always leak. So I actually had to buy a uh, I bought a, another used one that had a lot better. This one doesn't really have any pits, has a lot of staining. But we can start installing that. Um, what you're gonna have. This particular one has a little, just a plastic nylon wiper that just keeps the uh, the um, the piston from ever rubbing the sides, just kind of keeps it in place. But you're gonna have these, what they're gonna call U-cups. And a lot of times on the, um, on the diagrams and stuff, you can't see which way they go. Well, the U always faces the pressure side. So if this is my pressure side, it's gonna be there because this little, this little cup will expand outwards onto the piston and onto the wall, the higher the pressure is. If you put it this way, it's just gonna leak. So people put these in backwards. So the the U always faces the pressure side. Do we have the old one? Yeah, here's the old one. It The U is always open to the pressure side. So I've got that little, this little spacer and this little U cup installed down in there, just like that. So now we can take our main hydraulic ram
That's a nice type fit. Yeah, that's ah, that's what it should be. And then at the top, what you'll have on most hydraulic rams is you're just gonna have a a little seal, same thing you'd have like on an axle. It's a double lip seal, and it prevents stuff from going in and out. But mainly, it just kind of is a wiper. It just wipes junk off. Rob, um, this particular one, I do have a snap ring, so we'll just. Throw a snap ring in real fast. I'm gonna be able to push most of it in by hand. Now we'll go along to the uh, the piston side, actually the pump side. So on this particular jack, this right here is this rod right here, and this right here is this little housing. And so you notice there's no seals on here at all because the seal's actually down in there. And what they're gonna use is one of these U-cup seals, and it's actually pushed down and inside there. So you gotta get it out. And so you just find the little groove. The old one's easy to get out. And we're just going to pull it, pull it out. There you go. That's our old dude to U-cup. And we can install our new one. They do sell a special little tool that's like three of these little bars that actually, they fold it. They fold it into like a, like an M. And those do make it easier. Um, we could probably make something up, but you can, if you're just doing one or so of these, you can fiddle around with it and get it in. But that's all installed. So now this should be a nice tight fit and it is so good. So that's rebuilding the little piston part. So now the amazingly mysterious check ball. This actually screws up into there and this is their check ball seat and then this is your check ball. Just this little thing can hold back tons of force. Thousands of, you know, a thousand PSI. Just that right there and a little spring. And so that holds pressure. So this spring just holds pressure on there. And so fluid can go through this way and it just pushes that ball back just barely. Fluid flows in and then the pressure behind it holds that back closed. So, you know, this side can hold thousands of PSI behind it by just this little teeny ball, um, all with that. It's kind of funny because I bought, you know, I got the original pallet jack and then I bought a pump for parts because some of these parts were missing and in both of them, this little check ball was not in there. And so that might've been one of the reasons why both of the pallet jacks were kind of thrown away is because somebody misplaced just a little BB and didn't put it in right. But if you have one that you're really trying to, you know, you're just trying to salvage, a um, couple things you could do is maybe I could put a drill bit in there and really lightly kind of just spin it. Um, you could even put the drill bit in and spin it backwards. It might dull up the drill bit, but just kind of smooth out that surface in there and just find a new BB. Close, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, just find a new little BB and throw it in there and that might be enough to seal the surface. You know, cause some of these, this surface isn't removable. It's actually machined directly into the housing. Um, you could also try something like a Q-tip. If it's big enough, a Q-tip with some um, valve lapping compound and just kind of rub it in there, try to smooth out the surface um, just to help so this, this can seal. Cause I mean, that's a machine surface in there and that's a machine surface. And so those need to be a hundred percent airtight I guess you would call it but that's it free pallet jack $80 in parts about an hour hour and a half of playing around with it it's all back together no weird leaks holds weight just fine doesn't drop when it's not supposed to anyway just like a hydraulic jack should beautiful if you want to move something heavy in your shop get you one of these one more thing is that if, if it is leaking out of these seals, 
sometimes you can just fix it. This style right here has two nuts. This is actually just a crush. I can tighten this top one against this one and it'll um, increase the seal on this shaft and stop that leaking. This style right here has nothing. This style right here is a pretty typical what you find on most modern jacks. Now if also if the jack is slowly creeping down, sometimes just the seal around the bottom of the crush washer isn't tight enough. The well not crush washer, the little copper crush washer. And sometimes just tightening tightening this nut, making sure this nut right here is tight will fix that sometimes. Same with this one. This lower one would do the same thing. Um, but this one tightens the seal up here. There's no way to tighten the seal or to do anything with the seal up here besides just replace it. Really the only way to learn them is just to go out and rip them apart. Keep track of it. Download a diagram online. You can see all the parts are not that complicated. It's nice. It's small. It's compact. It's, right, it's not a hard thing to work on. Thanks for watching guys. See you soon. Bye.